Durant's legacy, Jordan. I'll give it to this you. Dude, this dude, debate it. The, he, his legacy is it's not cemented. He's an all-time great, that we know. But in terms of an all-time winner, that's that is is yet to be determined. But to go out and and like I said, to average 30 plus 35 in the finals, and do what he did in terms of scoring the ball, the efficiency, ingratiating himself into this team. That to me is pretty cool because a lot of superstars can't come into an already superstar driven team and, and be great. So, yeah, we can criticize him for chasing rings. I don't know if it's fair. Maybe it is, but he certainly played his part perfectly. And you got to give him credit for that. He did. I mean, the commercial you can get. I mean, everybody loved him coming out of Texas, right? He was the number right. two yeah, overall yeah, yeah. pick. I mean, so don't let the truth get yeah. in the way of a good narrative if you're Nike, right? So he was a wonderful player at Texas. He did it all. He came into the league, was an elite level scorer, has been an elite level scorer, grew frustrated. Here's the one thing. He did not ride the coattails of Curry, Thompson, no. and Green and win this championship. He was really the fuel to the engine throughout the course of these NBA Finals, and that is the thing that separates him. That's why he was the deserved MVP of the NBA Finals. He hits the big three in the face of LeBron James in Game 3, down two late, under a minute to go, to ultimately prove to be the game-winning shot against the Cleveland Cavaliers to put him up three games to none. What Durant did, shooting percentage-wise, 55% from the floor, over 42% from three, it was utterly remarkable. Okay, he didn't ride the coattails on the court, but he no. did join a team whose culture was in place and was such that the unselfishness, the lack of egos, maybe anything that he had experienced tension-wise with Russell Westbrook, that was just not a factor on this team. So in a degree or in a way, did he actually come in and ride the coattails of a team, not basketball-wise, but culture-wise, and he joined an already good thing? Well, I think he did. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to go out there and deny that he, he went to a team that just went to the NBA Finals and blew a three games to one lead that was the NBA champion the year before. You can't be there and say, well, Kevin Durant was there when they built it, because that yeah. that is clearly not the yeah. case. I mean, the house was built already. Durant came in and made the house a little bit nicer. I mean, that is what Kevin Durant did. So Durant's the attic. Right, Durant's, yeah, where he, you know, they remodeled the basement. Yeah. You know, he's the man yeah. room. He's the man's room downstairs. The man cave. Right, the man cave downstairs. That is what Durant went out there and did, but it does not take away from his brilliance as a player and how he evolved Jordan as a player this year. You know, I heard Hubie Brown talking about this and his dead-on correct assist, rebounds, defense, everything that he did this year, he evolved as a player yeah. and he sacrificed in the regular season. And look at his shots per game in the NBA Finals. They went yeah. up. Yeah, if, if Durant was a Ferrari coming into the season, he also showed a little Jeep Wrangler going. Right. You know, the way he defended, this guy guarded three positions. He guarded LeBron. Um, he was asked to switch on to point guards. He did all of that. And he scored, like you said, 35 a game, shooting 55% from the floor. They don't, I don't believe they win the series without him. I think he was that good.